Ooh, check it out. It's the one terabyte iPod. This is the reason most of you folks are here. And reading through the comments, I was a bit of a trend there, which was, I would love one of these, but I don't want to pay for one of them, which is truth. I mean, you know, prices in micro SDs are coming down all the time. And that's the only reason why I was able to do a one terabyte iPod. But getting a really nice seventh gen is pretty expensive. These guys are getting more collectible all the time. And also, I mean, who really needs a one terabyte iPod? I, I certainly don't. I mean, I've got a massive song library of like 70 odd thousand songs, but most of my stuff is CD quality. It's good enough for me. It's better than Spotify and poof, while you're walking around, whatever. And this guy can only shuffle 50,000 tracks. For me, I really like to shuffle music, especially a big library like that. 50,000 songs at CD quality, uh, I don't know, it's about half of this. And also the big factor, these are so hard to open. What like, genuinely horrific to get into. You son of a- iFix it is where you want to go to check out how to do this. I mean, this is how I learned how to do it. And uh, yeah, very difficult. 24 steps, <laughs> 30 minutes to two hours, if you're lucky. <laughs> like, yeah. And these are the legit guys. This is the this is the best way to do it. This is my favorite step here. This is how you know it's real messed up. On a clean, hard surface, lay the rear panel down on its side. Carefully but firmly push down on it, rolling your tire lip back onto its proper spot. You have to bend it back in the shape after you are done with it. And the thing about these guys is they're made of aluminium and it does not forgive or forget. You bend it too far, it will stay that shape and it will never go back together properly. There's these rails that run along here that it all clips into. If you just try and pry on it, they all get pulled out and it all binds up and effectively you have to destroy it to pull it apart. My first go at one of these, absolute disaster. All I could save was the motherboard, the screen and the click wheel. Everything else was a complete loss. But there are more model iPods than this. 5.5 gen. You know you got a 5.5 gen if you can search for songs. Ooh, look out for the features, guys. Oh. So in my one terabyte video, you saw this guy could take one terabyte, but their song limit is about 30,000 tracks. But it's made out of plastic instead of aluminium, and these are way easier to get into. I, I think they look better. I really do prefer these. They just, it's a classic white iPod. So with CD quality music, 30,000 tunes, you know, 256 gigs is really all you need for one of these. That's a lot cheaper, you know? Hey, we're getting there, it's easier and cheaper. But you're probably going, mate, 50,000 versus 30,000, that's 20,000 less. That's a lot, mate. That's too much of a downturn for me. Let me show you how much 30,000 tunes really is. <laughs> what are we up to? E, F. <laughs> yeah, look how far we still got left to go. F, G. <laughs> Let me know when you get bored, right? That's a lot of friggin' music, right? You ready for the punchline? That's only 15,000 songs. That's only half of one of these. But the thing is, these guys aren't really that much cheaper than these. Like, the 5.5 gens, people argue are the best sounding ones, so they're quite collectible. And also, they use the same adapters as these guys. So maybe, you know, 256 gigs is a lot cheaper to put in, but you're still using the same adapters, so the costs are pretty similar. So apart from the costs of these, there's one other thing. I don't like the color screens. I mean, back in the day, I loved them because having the ability to watch videos wherever you're going was amazing. But I just use these as music players nowadays. And the problem with these is, if the backlight is not on, they are nearly invisible. They are so hard to see. Uh-oh. <laughs> what? Well, I just charged you. <laughs> this is a Bluetooth iPod. Oh, gosh. Bring out your dead indeed. Oh, man. All right, everyone. You've just witnessed the death of the Bluetooth iPod. I genuinely just charged this for this video. Rest in peace, you... Pilot. We we can't use this guy as example either because I I actually dropped this and it caught the sads. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh. oh, I know which color screen works. The bootleg Chinese one with the wobbly plastic. <laughs> 
I've put in the refund notice, I have not heard back. Now see, when I turn off the backlight, this is even with like proper lighting kind of getting on this thing, they are so hard to see. And that's a big issue because when I'm going on big car rides, I bring one of these with me, the Shuffle Big Library. But what happens is when I hear a song that I like and I want to see what it is, I have to touch it to turn the backlight on to see what's going on. While you're driving, that's not good. So really, I love the monochrome iPods. Those are my favorites. It just shows you what the heck is being played and nothing else. So let's bring them out. Come on out, boys. Come on out. What we got? We got the original generation right here. Mate, we got the third gen. Get out of here. You've had your go, mate. And then we got the fourth gen. Oh, that's my guy right there. Look how visible that is. When you put sunlight on it, they're easier to see. And when it gets dark, just turn the fugly backlight on. Oh, they really didn't figure out illumination for a while. But you can see what I mean. When reflections get on these, the old monochrome ones are way easier to see. So storage wise, 256 gigs, 30,000 tunes. For me, that's sweet. I can live with that. Well, how much can these guys take? Well, they, these guys are limited to the 20 gigs. They can't see any more than that. Uh, you can put 20 gig third gen drives in the first gen iPod, but nothing more than that. It's because it's got this freakish reliance. Uh, uh, oh gosh. Come on. Uh, hey, got it. Firewire. It's not like USB at all. It's a different kettle of fish. Third gens, I've seen some people put 64 gigs in these and I say some people because I haven't managed to pull it off to be honest. These are fickle. These semi rely on Firewire. They need it for charging and, and restoring and such, which is super annoying. I've seen people get it to work. Uh, I haven't I've bothered either because you know, 64 gigs, that's nowhere near what I want. And then finally, ah. Oh, monochrome fourth gen my favorite generation this model was my first full-size ipod i picked it up back in high school days i think the sixth gen was about to come out when i got this so i got it for an absolute steal <laughs> it was covered in scratches too these are way easier to flash mod. they take it really well they they use purely usb you can use firewire too if you want and these guys can take 128 gigs that's stout for one of these old nuggets that's pretty good and that's about 18,000 cd quality tracks and that's more than i showed you flick and pass on that iPod touch. So not bad, but Dungus, nowhere near the 256 gigs that I wanted. That's all the monochrome iPods, hey? Well, I guess that's the end of the episode. Thanks so much for- Whoa, 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 whoa. You forgot one. It's one of the most important iPods they made. They invented the click wheel for this model. And this model was my first ever iPod. I bought it off a mate for 50 bucks because he wore out the battery on it. And it was the first thing I ever fixed myself as a kid. No help from mum or dad. Ordered the kit off eBay for a new battery and put it in. Mate. Mini. That's right. The click wheel was invented for this guy. It's easy to forget how old the Mini is. These two were sold side by side. Not you. Ah, the click wheel. An idea so good it's stuck like dog poo on Nana's doona. It's got the monochrome screen on it. It's got the same iPod OS on it. And what if I told you this little nugget, it could take 256 gigs in a mini. Now there is one condition, it's gotta be a second gen. It's easy to tell the second gens from the first ones because the second gens, the click wheel lettering is the same color as the casing. Now I've only got one second gen mini on hand to demo this, but it looks really sad. So you know, please don't get too upset. I mean, this, hey, this is how I found it, right? Oh, I said, if you, if you, if you look, you can, you can see that the coloring, oh. Go and look at him. What a sad little man. Oh, look at this damage. This little guy's completely cooked, by the way. I've already tried resuscitation. Who did this to you? You know what the best bit is? The dude scratched his name and phone number in the back. <laughs> Damn it, Diamory. I'll find you. No one's ever going to disrespect you again. I mean, here's an example of a first gen. See, the lettering does not match the lovely pink. But how do you tell on one of these? Well, you look for the date on the back. If it's 2004, it's a first gen. If it's 2005, it's a second gen. So yes, this is a first gen because the first and second gens are built exactly the same way. So cool, it's got the capabilities around 256 gigs. Is it cheap? My people are throwing these away. I know eBay stores that don't even bother stocking them because they can't get rid of them. I was buying these in their bunches on eBay and big broken lots. But not only are they cheaper, these are genuine 
fun to open. This is a total geek project. These things are so massively over-engineered, it's amazing. See, they rate it as moderate. I mean, because yeah, it's a bit of a project, but it's not too bad, way less steps. Check it, iFixit even has all the batteries and stuff. So, you know, go to them for the guides. If you really want to know how to do this properly, they got step-by-step, -step. it's super nice. So when you're opening up one of these, we need to get these plastic caps off. And so you want something really thin to kind of get in there and get it out. It is double-sided taped down, so it is going to fight you. But the thing is, this fit of the plastic against this metal is what makes it look nice or bad if it's been dropped. Um, and this stuff is really soft and you can cut into the aluminium, which is going to make big shiny spots. So, I mean, in the case of a silver one, who cares? But on a pink one, it will look really ratty. So if you're trying to keep on a super good nick, maybe try using a plastic one, like a really, really thin something made out of plastic. I don't care about this guy. I think this was water damaged. It's cooked. Here we go. Ah, oh, the glue is no joke, by the way. Ah, oh, look at all the glue. Yeah. And check out this business. As I'm saying, this thing is so overbuilt, it's amazing. So usually when you order a battery, it comes with the tools as well. You know, just make sure it does come with the tools. In my experience, having one of these is super useful. Having something really narrow like this is useful. There are these little screws here. See, it's already a weird iPod, the fact that Gotta take these Phillips out. Oh. All right, so to get this sir clip out, well, it's kind of like a sir clip. I, I'm doing it the really dirty, dirty ghetto way at the moment. Uh, you want to make sure you don't push through too far because there are electronics under here. So you, you can see these arms. You want to push them inwards. Oop. Hey, we got one. So you only need to get one side, really. Hey, there we go. So this connector here connects the click wheel to the motherboard and you don't just want to go in there and pry it out. You will break it. You can just peel it straight off the back of the connector. Don't ask me how I know this. So what I like to do is just a little lever on one side and a little lever on the other and you just gently wiggle it out. Hey mate, there we go. Right, now we need to push all the guts out this way. <laughs> Seriously, how cool is this build? How cool is this, eh? <laughs> there you go. Look at that. And how's this? If you want the click wheel out now, you push down and out. How cool are these? Look at this. It's got like threads tapped into it. It's an extruded piece of aluminium. Like super nice. And a perfect opportunity if you just want to swap the colors around. People actually make replacement cases, by the way. Now we get to the final topic in the cheapness. So with these guys here, to flash mod one of these, you need to get yourself an iFlash board. You can get ones that are just SD cards straight in. This one is a compact flash one, which means basically you have your micro SD into your compact flash adapter, into your iFlash board, and then into the iPod. The fifth gens are the exact same way, the exact same adapters like this. For these older guys, you need one of these style boards for the different hard drives that they got in them. But it's still a compact flash adapter, so you take this, like that, and then you put it in. Are you ready for this thing's party piece? So if we flip this around, there's the little battery, so we can go ahead and just unplug that. So at this point, if you just wanted to change the battery, you can just pop a new one in and stick it straight in and you're all good. It's this, the micro drive. Now we just got to get this tape off. Ah, there we are. Look at these tiny little drives. This guy was a marvel. Look at this. So I'm gonna take all this rubber bumper stuff off it because you know, this isn't going back in the iPod. If you want to reuse this, you do want to try and keep these rubber bumpers on there. So if you take a look at a drive, huh, that looks familiar. Huh, I wonder. Check that out. They're a one-to-one -one fit. Genuine, this is the only adapter you need. Just because I want to tell folks all the options involved, you can get knockoff kind of CF to SD card adapters. These work some of the time. These are hit and miss. Like really, if you want the sure thing, go to the iFlash site. No, genuinely, not sponsored. These are the guys that make this possible, really. Spend the extra couple of bucks on one of these. It's a direct fit. Then basically, you just put your battery back in. Oh, by the way, this board up here is designed to come off. So while you're trying to smush everything, if this pops off, don't panic, just stick it back on. And then basically, it's a case of just sliding it back into the casing. <laughs> just a word of caution when sliding this back in. See this guy here, C18, 
So you want to be careful that you don't knock that when you're putting this in, when you're sliding it through. It's really cramped in this little thing. And you don't want to knock it on the inside as you're sliding it through. Because if you knock that guy off, all of a sudden the click wheel will just start behaving strange. And you'll end up spending lots of time trying to figure out what the heck's wrong until you find that little guy on the floor somewhere. Don't ask me how I know. Oh man, I don't even ask me how many iPods I've ruined this exact way. You know, so basically use reverse the procedures, you plug this into iTunes, you restore it and boom, you've got a 256 gig iPod if you use a second gen and not a broken one like this one. Give me my thing back. Give, give me, give me. I don't have to be kind to you anymore. I'm done with you. Ugh. So let me introduce you to my actual iPod right now. And it's been my iPod for poof, about a month. I teased it in a previous video. Yes, it's got a green click wheel because the blue one broke while I was using it and I had to swap it out. Ugh, and it was the only spare that I had. Blue and green must never be seen. I like the blue one because of the blue and white click wheel. But anyway, so sure, a second gen iPod mini can take 256 gigs. This guy can shuffle 30,000 tracks. It can shuffle the same amount of music as a 5.5 gen. And it's got the monochrome screen and it's a smaller size. It's a dedicated music player man I'm telling you this is the cheapest way you only need one adapter you can still buy batteries for these these aren't impossible to open like these guys yet they are far easier to live with than these guys because these guys are limited by firewire and sometimes these guys aren't recognized by Windows 10 it just happens every now and then these second gen minis I haven't had any issues with Windows 10 with these guys so you get all the retro coolness and the compact size and the massive storage of the later iPod and then it gets even better this is genuinely a little miniature iPod this guy's even got extra games on it. Little backlights, get the old school iPod experience in a convenient nugget. And this is a full-fledged miniature iPod, not just in the way that it works, but in also the accessories. It's got the same remote port. So you can take the remote accessory. I use this in the car. And boom, you plug your own headphones into there and you can just skip through tracks like this. Mate, we gotta talk about the clip. Oops! Ah, oh, with the blue and white it looks so good, and then with the green it looks awful. But just pretend that those are blue. Please pretend for me. They made a full-blown dock for it. Oh yeah, that ain't, that ain't new. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Look at that line out. You can, it means you can have it plugged into a stereo of some sorts. Or you can just use it as a desktop charging stand and just have your headphones plugged straight into that. I mean, there you go. That's my recommendation. Second gen iPod mini. By far the cheapest one to buy. In my opinion, one of the better ones for just playing music because I love that monochrome screen. It gets way better battery than the first gen minis. Talks perfectly fine with modern windows and you only need one adapter. And it's a total fun project to pull apart. It's not this awful exercise of pain that these ones are, I recommend.